Hi everyone, my name's Corey Fee and I'm the eDriving Vice President for Customer Success for the AMEA region. I'm delighted to be joining today's webinar and eDriving is always excited and proud to be invited to support Global Fleet Champions and Brake. We have a very long-standing relationship with Brake, which goes back approximately 25 years. It's a relationship that means a lot to us all of eDriving and one that we continue to strengthen every year with various activities, including sponsorship this year of Global Fleet Champions Driver Behaviour Pillar. When we think about driver behaviour, we typically think of risky behaviours, such as speeding and using your phone whilst driving. But due to the complexity of detection, fatigue and other forms of distraction are always very hard to measure. But management of those hidden behaviours is no less important. In fact, equally or more important than behaviours that can be easily detected or measured. Dare I say it, somewhat of a sleeping hazard. As other speakers will be discussing today, there are many reasons for a driver to be fatigued. But it's useful when we talk about fatigue that we consider it as a type of driver behaviour and a risk that we need to recognise and manage appropriate. So what makes me qualified to talk about driver fatigue and ways in which to manage it? In a previous life, I was permanently employed expedition leader throughout Africa and the Middle East. I was a long haul specialist with most of my expeditions being three months or longer. We use specialist hand-built vehicles to drive some of the world's most challenging environments in some of the world's least developed and often dangerous terrains. The work was physically and mentally gruelling. You were largely selected for the role based on your capacity to function and make decisions whilst sleep deprived and mentally and physically exhausted. Understanding cognitive impairment by fatigue and exhaustion and managing the risk was the only way to survive and ensure the survival of your team. To this day, I can honestly say that I've never fallen asleep at the wheel, physically anyway. However, has my judgment been impaired? Yeah. My reaction time, of course. My attentiveness and alertness, yeah, most definitely. Have I ever lost the ability to focus and perceive depth whilst driving? I'm embarrassed to say yes on many occasions. I mention this not out of bravado, but purely to highlight the complexity in detection of fatigue impairment. Technological solutions such as eye movement detectors, EEG and physiological monitors, driver performance monitors such as lane departure, etc., are a great hard control and undoubtedly they save many lives. But once we start to display physical or physiological signs of fatigue, cognitive impairment has more than likely been present for many minutes or hours before. So it's important to also look for ways to prevent fatigue as well as detect them. So how can we manage the unmeasurable? Before we begin to discuss ways to effectively manage driver fatigue, let's look at a few more complicating factors that we need to consider. Driver fatigue is often overlooked, often an overlooked operational risk, not because we don't accept it as a risk, but rather our inability to accurately identify and track the multitude of causal factors and the complexity in designing management strategies to reduce the risk. It's important to also recognise that there may be several psychological and cultural barriers to success when managing fatigue. Historically, many professional, professional drivers would see tiredness as a weakness and drivers were forced to push through by peer pressure and company expectation. Luckily, those days are largely past, although there are still some employees and workplaces that may be exposed to these pressures. For instance, a company's driver scheduling and routing decisions can make a significant impact on the perceived pressure to override fatigue. And it is also a strong message that whilst the company may talk the talk, with policy, commitment and procedures. The reality is that company commitment to fatigue management is not reflected in operational expectations. We also need to consider cumulative fatigue, often a consequence of circumstances outside of our control or outside of the workplace. For example, a driver might be adhering to the company required eight hours per day with regular breaks, but we've neglected to consider other factors. For instance, they may be a new parent. We all know how tiring that can be. Another example may be an employee who commutes for an hour each way to even get to work, or a contractor who is working four hours each night to invoice, manage their rosters, maintain their vehicles, etc. In each of these examples, the individual's sleep bank can be progressively depleted to a dangerous level. I know other speakers today will cover circadian rhythms. This is why we at eDriving ask all of our clients, wherever possible, to keep drivers off the road between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. and during the well known afternoon dip in alertness. So how do we contemplate managing a risk with so much complexity? Having a good written policy in place that's published, endorsed by senior management, well communicated 
and most importantly upheld is critical. When we talk about policy, it's important to remember that while it may be easy to write the policy, successfully implementing it is the hard bit. Before you even contemplate procedural control, you need to understand the operational environment, local legislation, get whole of company buying, and most importantly, have management support. Management need to be fully on board, supportive, enthusiastic, and be willing to accept the operational impact that any concessions or compliance with the controls may cause. One poorly chosen communication from a company manager, the occasional exemption granted, or applying performance pressures that are not compatible with a procedural expectation will completely negate the control effectiveness. A successful fatigue risk management program will include ways to measure, monitor and manage the risk, as well as tools to educate employees. It encompasses everything from driver hours and rest breaks to processes that encourage open communication about fatigue related issues. Your policy should describe your organisation's procedures for identifying those at risk, compliance reporting procedures, investigation procedures, and what training, education, coaching you'll be providing to help minimise the risk. Drivers should be required to read, understand, and sign off on the policy to show that they agree to the measures before being issued a vehicle or permitted to drive on company business. Journey management is also a fundamental principle of fatigue management. The process needs to be flexible, adaptable, and accommodate every routine and non-routine journey. In some circumstances, fatigue management may simply involve a formalised process for scheduling, routing, rest breaks, and hours of service. In other circumstances, it may involve formal route hazard assessments, escalations for journey approval, or complex controls. Scheduling should enable drivers where possible to avoid driving between the peak fatigue hours that we've already mentioned and should ensure that shifts are timed to enable drivers to have adequate rest and sleep, good sleep, between their shifts. Diet is also something to consider, for example, avoiding heavy fatty foods and sugary drinks whilst or before driving. Scheduling and routing should take into account routine or non-routine delays while still allowing the driver to comply with rest break policy. There also needs to be a process in place that accommodates unforeseen circumstances or delays, such as a replacement driver or co-driver, redirection of other drivers to fulfil the outstanding tasks, etc. Employees need to have flexibility in their schedules to continue with planned breaks, regardless of time constraints, and management need to support, reinforce and commit to that flexibility. Training. Companies need to have a formal education process that includes fatigue related training for new recruits, periodic refresher training for all employees and intervention coaching for drivers considered high risk or those identified as requiring additional support. It is also useful for drivers to receive regular communication from management on the latest research or best practice tips relating to driver fatigue. Employees should be made aware of the factors that can affect sleep and the quality of sleep, the effects of sleep deprivation and how to maintain better sleep hygiene. Employees need to be trained sufficiently to understand their own specific indicators of fatigue and be empowered and supported to take the appropriate action, irrespective of peer organisational peer organizational or personal pressures to drive whilst hired. Training should always form part of a wider safety culture that involves regular communication, including information about fatigue as a primary risk factor. Communication. Every employee should hear regularly that fatigue is an important risk factor to be aware of, how to avoid it, why it's a focus area for the organisation, leadership and managers can lead by example and demonstrate behaviours that emphasise their commitment to being well rested before driving. Communication can take many forms and it's, up, it's really up to you how you do it. But some typical methods include company newsletters, emails, monthly safety updates, toolbox meetings, text messages, preferentially while not driving, team discussions, email signatures, and so on. Companies need to have an open door um, for all employees to discuss their concerns with not only fatigue, but all safety considerations. Employees affected by fatigue, or for example, those suffering from a sleep disorder, might worry about approaching their managers for fear that their jobs could be at risk. This could result in drivers knowingly putting their own lives and the lives of others at risk. All employees should feel comfortable approaching their managers without having this concern. Coaching. 
Coaching is different to training. And this quote from Alan Fine sums up the difference nicely. When we think about driver fatigue, training provides drivers with education about the issue, what they should do and why. Coaching helps them keep their behavior in check with legal or company expectation, kind of a way to constantly remind drivers how to do, do the right thing. Driver managers are usually ideally placed to be effective coaches. They know the drivers, they know their schedules, they know what training has been given, and they more than likely know the consequences of driving tired. Think of a driver coach as being a bit like a football coach. Coach, They're not there to teach them how to play the game, they're there to help the employees make the right decisions, make the most of their existing skill set, and encourage them to be a stronger part of the team. So we've already mentioned some of the technology that can be used as an intervention to driver fatigue. And while some technologies are better than others at detection of cognitive impairment, technology needs to be implemented in conjunction with other controls outlined. Understanding and acknowledging the risk, effective and frequent communication, and operational flexibility that can accommodate each and every circumstance are the minimum requirement to manage fatigue effectively. If you have these elements formalized and effective, you won't be dependent on the hard controls. Telematics data can be extremely useful for providing insights into driver performance and potential risk exposures before they become a problem. Data such as driver hours, trip times, trip lengths, and break times can all be collected by traditional or smartphone telematics. Daily weekly reports on the data can also allow managers to build up an overall picture of each employee and their potential for being affected by fatigue. For example, how many hours does the employee drive each day and week? Does the employee work night shifts? If so, do they have the opportunity for adequate quality sleep before returning to work? Does the employee have the opportunity to sleep for seven to eight hours uninterrupted every day? Does the employee work overtime hours? Is the driver awake during typical hours of sleep? Combined with open forms of communication, this data can be assessed alongside personal factors such as, does the driver experience any symptoms of a sleep disorder? Or has the employee experienced any changes in personal life? e.g. a new baby or bereavement in a family, etc. Keeping fatigue front of mind is by far the most effective control method once you have set the expectations. Administering the training, establishing two-way communication channels and consistently offer, offering coaching and support is, is integral. The way that our clients use our technology to manage fatigue is largely about frequent and effective communication on a driver's performance through our smartphone application, Mentor by eDriving. By continually being aware of risk factors for fatigue, such as driver hours, trip types, trip times, and rest breaks, and feeding information back to the driver in real time about their risk of fatigue, this communication allows the driver to self-assess their level of fatigue and also comply with the company expectation. If you'd like to know more information about the Mentor Program and how technology can help your fleet to manage fatigue or other risk, risky driving behaviours, please don't hesitate to contact me directly. Before I conclude, I'd like to share this slide that we include in all of our eDriving webinars, just to serve as a reminder as to why we do what we do. At eDriving, it's our mission to help ensure that everyone who drives for work purposes returns home safely at the end of each and every day, and I'm sure that's a mission that you're willing to support. Thank you all for your time today, and I hope you found the session useful. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. And if there's anything else I can do to help your organisation better manage driver fatigue or to help with anything else I've mentioned today, such as safety culture, training or coaching, please don't hesitate to contact me directly and I'll be more than happy to assist you. Thanks for listening. And in some respects, if you were tired before tuning in, I hope that my talk today has provided you with a good opportunity for a quick nap and that you are now refreshed before taking your next drive. Thanks again and take care.